Restoration Shakespeare refers to the period from 1660, when the theaters reopened, to about 1710, this period of about 40, 50 years, when quite radical adaptations or rewritings of Shakespeare were performed and very popular on the London stage. The theater in the early part of the Restoration was a reaction against the, the Puritanism that had come before. Theaters had been shut for 18 years, so there were no new plays. So what did they do? They went back to the plays from Shakespeare's time. They went back to the three most popular playwrights, Beaumont and Fletcher, Ben Jonson and Shakespeare. The interesting thing is that the plays by Shakespeare were the plays that nobody wanted. They wanted Beaumont and Fletcher because they thought those were the most crowd-pleasing. And Shakespeare, they just kind of, well, you take these plays and you take these plays and it won't really make any difference. They're not very, very popular. And what Amanda and I have found fascinating about Restoration Shakespeare and really why we're doing this project with the Folger at all is that the first generation to do Shakespeare after Shakespeare changed everything. Women played women's parts, finally. The theaters moved totally indoors to a proscenium arch stage. There was massive scenery on a scale that Shakespeare didn't know, and much more use of integrated music and dancing to tell the story. It's not to say that those things hadn't existed in the pre-Restoration theater. They had, but they were amplified. You had this long dry patch where the Puritans had clamped down. It's like, let's have fun, let's party, let's have these glitzy entertainments. One of the things that is really very interesting is the amount of space in some productions that they accord to music and dance. It was a way of making the aural world of the theater align with the splendor of the scenic effect and the sets that they were using. So it was all of a piece. Could we just hear that marvelous stage direction from the Dryden, Davin, and Shadwell version of The Tempest. So the beginning of the Restoration Tempest has this amazing opening stage direction. The front of the stage is opened and the band of 24 violins with the harpsichords and theorbos which accompany the voices are placed between the pit and the stage. While the overture is playing, the curtain rises and discovers a new frontispiece joined to the great pilasters on each side of the stage. And then it goes into this really long description of all of the intricate things that are on stage. And it ends with this really evocative description of stage action. This tempest, supposed to be raised by magic, has many dreadful objects in it. As several spirits and horrid shapes flying down amongst the sailors, then rising and crossing in the air. And when the ship is sinking, the whole house is darkened, and a shower of fire falls upon him. This is accompanied with lightning and several claps of thunder to the end of the storm. That is such a fantastic stage direction because it summarizes all the things that made Restoration Shakespeare so wonderful. So obviously they had some real resources at the Dorset Garden Theater in 1674 to pull this off. It really gives us a sense of what was so memorable and irresistible for the audience about this kind of play. There would certainly be a disconnect between a spectator coming from the Globe and then going into a Restoration Theater. They would have been thinking, where's Shakespeare? Because a lot of these revisions, the story's approximately the same, but sometimes there's added characters. Sometimes a lot of Shakespeare is gone. And in part, that's because they wanted to regularize Shakespeare. They wanted to make it appeal and bring it up to date with the way that people were speaking. And Shakespeare seemed antiquated in old fashioned. So what happened, beginning in the Restoration, to make Shakespeare the playwright on the verge of extinction, but a hundred years later, he was the only one of his era that survived. He was the great Shakespeare, the representative of Britain's dramatic genius. This is why the Restoration period is so fascinating to us. Something profound and lasting about Shakespeare's reputation started in the Restoration. So it doesn't matter if it's now, or if it's the Restoration, or if it's Shakespeare's time. There's something about these characters that we recognize. We recognize their humanity, we recognize their struggles, we recognize what they're going through. There's something about these characters that speak to us. Over time, Restoration versions of Shakespeare fell out of favor. 
as Shakespeare's personal brand, if you will, rose and rose and rose throughout the 18th century. But this may be the moment to look back and recapture some of the freedom that Restoration Shakespeare gives us to think that we have something to say to Shakespeare too, not just he has something to say to us.